Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. So in this one I'm going to be showing you how you can use the set timeout and set interval functions in JavaScript to, in the case of set timeout, run a code with some time delay or in the case of set interval, repeatedly run code at a specified time interval. And I'm dealing with both together because the syntax for both is almost identical. So let's start with set timeout. So it's a function that is available on the global window object. Now, because it's available on the global window, you actually don't need this prefix here, but just so you know, that is where it is located. So you'll most often see set timeout called in this way without the prefix. And set timeout expects two arguments. So the first one is a function that is going to contain the code that's going to be run after a delay. And the second argument is the time delay that you want to give to it in milliseconds. So I'll do that first of all, let's say 2000 milliseconds. So the function that I specify in the first position is going to run with a time delay of two seconds. So now I'm going to define the function. So you just write out a normal function here and then inside you want, I'm just gonna log something to the console here. You can do whatever you want. And this is already going to be a set timeout that works. So if I head over to the browser, after two seconds, you'll see that X is being logged to the console. Now let's make it do something more meaningful here. I'm going to create a counter. And what I'm going to do inside the set timeout is increase the counter by one and then log the value of the counter. So same process as before, but now it's increasing the value of the counter by one and then locking that to the console. Now there is another way that you can structure the set timeout and that is to externalize the function that you're running with a time delay. So, so I'll create a function down here called increment by one. And inside there, I'm going to pass in the logic that is currently inside the set timeout. Okay, and then I can just delete this function altogether that I've defined in the first position. Now, instead of writing out a function, I'm just going to reference this function that is external to it. Now, I don't call the function with parentheses, I just reference the function, and that is because set timeout in the first position, it's expecting a function definition, not for a function to be called. So you only need to reference the function now you will see that this is working in exactly the same way, but now we've externalized the logic. So that is how we can run some code with a time delay. Let's see now how we can repeatedly call that function with set interval. So set interval is also a function that is available on the global window object. So it's the same syntax in the first position you enter the function. So I'm just going to reference increment by one here rather than defining a new function. So you can already see why it was useful to externalize the logic. I would have had to rewrite this function inside set interval, but now I can just reference it again so I can use it multiple times. And in the second position, I specify the time interval for calling this function. So I'll set that to one second here. So now if we take a look in the browser, you'll see that set interval is running the function increment by one every second and it's logging the new value of counter to the console. Now this will continue forever unless you specify otherwise. So a way that you can stop this at say the value of 10 is to go inside the set interval function. So I'm actually going to write a function here rather than reference the existing one. The first thing I'm going to do is run the increment by one function. And this time I'm calling it because I'm not writing it in the first position. It's not going to call itself. So I need to call it with parentheses. And then after that, what I want to do is check if the value of counter is 10. And if it is, I want to stop this set interval running. So how do you do that? Well, every time you create a set interval, it gives you a return value. So the return value is effectively the ID of the set interval. So I'll call this 
interval ID. And I can stop the interval running by calling clear interval and passing in the ID. So you need to capture that return value that's created when you call set interval in order to be able to clear the interval. And I'm also going to log a message here saying that the interval was cleared. And I'll set the time interval on this to a short time so it doesn't take so long. So if I refresh now, you see when it gets to 10, interval was cleared and it's no longer running. And this technique also works for set timeout. So when you create a set timeout, in order to be able to clear it, what you need to do is to take the return value of the set timeout. So I'll say timer ID here, and then I can clear this timeout by its ID. So one possible use case of this is that you are redirecting a user to another web page using JavaScript, and you'd like the user to be able to cancel the redirect before the time has elapsed. So first of all, you'd want to create some sort of element in your HTML that the user can click or do something with to stop the redirect. So in this case, it's just going to be a button that says cancel redirect, which when clicked is going to clear the timeout. Now what I want to do in my timeout here is create a redirect. So the way that I do that is I say window.location, set the value of the href to, I'll just use google.com in this case. Now, after I've created this timeout, I'm going to select the button first of all that I've created. So that has an ID of BTN, and I'll save that in a variable called BTN. And I'll add an event listener to the button, listening out for a click. And then when that occurs, what I'm going to want to do is to clear the timeout, passing in the ID of the timeout. And I'll also log a message to the console here, redirect canceled. And I'll add a bit more of a time delay here so the user has a bit more time to click the button. So let's see what this looks like now in the browser. So this time I'm not going to click anything and just wait for the redirect to occur. So you see we're heading to google.com. Now if I run the code again, this time, and I open the console log, if I click the button, I get the redirect cancelled message and you see that now we're not going to Google. So this is one example of how you might use clear timeout to prevent a process from occurring before the time you specified has elapsed. So that is it for this tutorial on set timeout and set interval. If you found it useful, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.